Hi everyone, this is Carolyn from Nona's Nutty Crafts. And today what I'm going to be doing is a Christmas inspired um, wreath for y'all. So you could do these anyways. This is just one way to do it. And hopefully it will give you some creative ideas. So I'm going to use this wreath base here. I have my Santa. Isn't he cute? And I'm going to show you how we're going to attach them and everything. I have here some picks of some sort, different sorts, some flowers that I'm thinking of adding, and using this ribbon. But we're always subject to change because, you know, as a designer, we always change our minds sometimes. <laughs> In the middle of it, you realize something isn't quite right. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my wreath here, and I'm going to go ahead and just spread everything out, open it up. And that gets it so I can see where things need to be placed in here. Now, I could do this on a grapevine, or I could do this on a, you know, deco mesh. But I'm choosing to do it on the uh, greenery today. I thought it would be, you know, a little something fun, fun um, for everybody. So let's get this spread out as really quick as I can for y'all. And, you know, because see how flat everything is? We need some dimension in here. We don't want it to be laying flat. Oops. Let's go. Coming around the end here. And I'm just, you know, wherever my fingers come and can pull up um, one of the little branches, that's what I'm doing just to pull it up and out. And this wreath here is actually a double layer. So some of them you'll find just as being flat, but this one actually is a double layer. And I don't know if you can see it from this side. It has two metal, you know, uh, rings, so to speak, here, um, which gives it a little bit more dimension. Let me turn that light on, and maybe that will help a little bit more. There we go. Spread it out. And as we go, we'll decide, you know, if it needs, a twig needs to be put here or there on it. Because you can always move it around. That's the great thing about having something that's in wired like this. Because you can go ahead and tweak it to uh, work better for your design. All right. I think that was twice around. <laughs> okay. Good enough. So... Now the big thing is to take my Santa and decide, do I want to put him on this side or do I want to put him on this side? And I think I'm going to put him on this side because we're going to put a bow here. And I think if I have it here, this part of his hat is going to get a little hidden. So this way it kind of hangs off to the side a little bit. And I think that would look just perfect. So now we're going to take a pair of wire cutters here. We're going to take some wire. Doesn't matter, you know, my gauge, I think this is 20... This is 24 gauge. And we're going to take some sewing needles. I just moved them. Here they are. Now I have these sewing needles and these are really kind of cool. Um, you can use them for dolls and stuff like that. And they have different, you know, sizes and stuff. So I'm going to take the really big one because it has a really big eye on it. And I'm going to take some of this. Now, there's nothing in here like, you know, those little seed packs or anything like that. So if there were any seed packs in here, then I would go ahead and take them out. But there aren't any. So I have to decide first how I want to put them. I know I'm going to... Um, let's just flip them over on this side. I know I'm going to attach them here and like probably up here are the two places that I'll probably attach them. And we're going to use the wire on that. So you can poke little holes and stuff if you want. I just go ahead and cut off a bunch of the wire. There's no way to say how much do you need or not need. Just kind of gauge it, so to speak. And I'm going to take the needle. That's why I like this big needle, because it's easy to thread through. And I'll just fold my wire back. Then I decide where I want to go, and I'm just going to poke it in and poke it come the other side. And look how easy that is. Now you can take your wire if you want to. And you can twist tie it just a little bit here. Which I like to do just a few times just like that. And let's take our other piece of wire. Which I think I made really long here. My glue pot is ready almost. 
and do the same thing and we're just going to thread it poke it whoops now this doesn't oh it's like why is it not poking through <laughs> so we'll just help it along here and just come through right there just like that and look how easy that is now some people use oz you know which is um almost like a ice pick in the sense of same which is fine use whatever you think you need to use to make it work for you and i'll do the same thing here now just to let you know this is a collaboration video that i'm doing with melissa from buckeye recent things from barb from barb's country creations and from Connie M from Reads by Connie M. So at the end, you're going to see the next link to the next video. So that way, you'll be able to have some fun. We're all doing something different. Now, I've already kind of flattened it out right here, just from putting them on there, and that's fine. And I'm just going to take my two wires and thread it through. Now, since I know I have these two wire bars here, I'm going to make sure I get on each side of them, at least one of them. be that hard there we go and I'm just going to tie it just a little bit around just to make sure where I want him you know get in place before I tie it really tight tight all right there's one down and I feel it <laughs> there's the other wire now I'm going to leave the wires long right now, just until I make sure I got everything where I want it in case I want to replace them some, you know, just to make sure. All right. So I will make sure that he's not doing all this. And the way you do that is just go back to your wire. Now I use green wire and you can go ahead and you can twist it really tight. Where's my other green wire? <laughs> it's hard to see green on green. <laughs> and I'll just twist that tight too. Where is it? And then he'll be on there a lot more secure. So let's go ahead and make our bow. Okay, so let's move this off to the side. We're going to make my easy bow maker come on out and play with us today. Get some of this off of here. So you can see what we're going to do. Now I said I was going to use these three colors right here to make the easy bow, or the bow, not the easy bow, but it could be an easy bow. <laughs> I think it's an easy bow. All right, I love this little woodsy, um, you know, like a birch tree. I, I had one as a kid growing up, so I remember that really well cut off where it was bent because you can't get that crease out of there now i'm going to make some long tails on this i'm going to make this tail this rule has eight inches on each side but i'm going to make it the length of this so that's about uh 18 19 20 about 22 inches okay and we're just going to put this around whoops there we go and we're going to go about six inches. Six inch loop on each side. I bring this down here and put it in there. That's not hard, right? So I'm going to do two rows of this and that may end this entire row. Because <laughs> there wasn't a lot on this. But I like it. I like the thickness of this. Some of these you can get and they may be really stiff. But this is like a light canvas texture to it. And I really like how it feels. It's easy to work with. So we'll pull that down and we'll cut off the end there. Get rid of that. And so far there's our bow. Isn't that pretty? Just that alone is pretty, isn't it? Oh, I love this. All right, so we're gonna bring in some plaid. Now this, the, the way this is playing off of, this is kind of 
Upside Santa, it's a little Christmassy. So I'm bringing in this color, which brings in all the colors from the flowers in there. And that's how I'm, that's how I'm going with it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So we're going to bring this one down just a little bit shy of what I had it as. Because, you know, we're going to do this in layers so that you can see all the different layers of the ribbon hanging down. And I'm going to bring this one in just a little bit. So about five and a half. And what I'm going to do with this one, because I'm going to end with this one on top, I'm going to make three loops of this. And this does have a right and a wrong side, so you got to make sure that you do that. Let's bring it down to five instead of five and a half. It makes it easier for everybody to understand when you get into these half sizes. Sometimes it gets a little crazy. Just make sure your ribbon's all the way out. And by that I mean by the sides. Sometimes it will crink up on the sides on you or fold under. And if you notice, I'm turning it halfway around, just like this. And there we go. So we're going to have three loopy bows, or loops, just like that. One bow, but loopy. Now I could bring back the tan that I have, which I may. Maybe do one loop or two. We'll see. Might need it might need just a little tan on top and this is a lighter tan you could also go this one's just a little bit darker if you wanted to go the darker route but I'm taking up the lighter route um, just so that everything's not so so dark I think maybe we'll do two loops on this one okay ribbon get back down there and again, I'll make my, my tail just a little bit shorter. And I'll do two loops of this one. And this one I'm going to bring in just a little bit shorter on it. And I was at six, five. This should be about four. Yep, it's at four. You can go three. You can do whatever. It is your creativeness. And this ribbon really doesn't have a front or a back to it, but I'm still doing my usual um, take it and do a half turn on it. You know, as we say, bottoms up. <laughs> okay, that takes care of that ribbon. Now, to do the center of this, I'm going to take a little piece of this. We're going to use this in a few minutes. So let me cut that off. Put this off to the side. And let me go ahead and get a pipe cleaner. Not a pipe cleaner, a zip tie. So you can take a zip tie just like this. And you can put it right through here. You could do it this way, you could thread it through the bottom and then start to tie it. It really doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever feels good to you. I bring it here, bring it through my fingers, and I'll zip tie it. Now before you zip tie it all the way, you need a pipe cleaner to go in there. So I'm going to choose a tan one, because you have to have some way to attach it to the wreath. And I'm going to take it just like this, thread it through about halfway. And I'll tighten this. I'm not going to tighten it, again, all the way tight because what I want to do is get my tails facing downward. Just like that. And I'll open these up a little bit to make sure everybody is kind of where I want them to be. And the bow will tell you which one needs to go up or which one needs to go down. Where I got it, where I want it to be. Let me move this out of our way. Then you can go ahead and you can tighten up your zip tie as tight as you can. And then cut off the excess. Now if I was doing this on some vines and stuff, 
I may want to put a little dab of glue so it doesn't come through, you know, and poke anybody's door. But I don't have to do that on this. It has so much greenery that it's not going to be an issue. All right, I think that's going to be a cute little bow on there. So let's get our Santa. This is going to be my country Santa. So now we're going to decide where we want the bow. I kind of wanted to go across here from, you know, where dear old Santa is. So I'm going to go ahead and place this bow in here. You could do it up higher if you want to do something down below. You can do it however you want. I'm going to kind of do it across from him because I've got these cute little flowers I want to use. And again, we'll thread this right through here. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the whole step for you. This piece right here. What I like to do is take off the edge, um, these little the pieces of wire. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you can leave it in there. And I just take them out to make the ribbon a little bit more pliable. Let me wind that around my finger. And I'm going to take this ribbon, and this is to cover up that zip tie. And I'm just going to fold it in sets of three, just like that. Or thirds, not sets of three. And I'm going to bring it around behind. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And this will just give it a nice finished touch on the other side. So see how it covers up where the zip tie was? Or is, I should say. So now that I messed up my bow again, which I'll probably do it again every time because when I flip it over, <laughs> make sure none of that pine stuff is connected to it. Where's my other, where's my other thing? Here it is. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna maybe stick it just a little bit higher, just a little bit. Not a direct across, but just a little bit higher. And bring it through. And you can see where I brought it through. There is a bar going through here. And I'll just twist tie it. And at the end, I go ahead and I'll cut these off and wire them back in there. So let's straighten up our bow a little bit. all my little pieces on the floor <laughs> and then we'll tend to all these tails and everything once we get everything situated in here okay so now my next thing is to decide how I want to put these. And I thought, now my other one fell on the floor. I'm doing something where they just come out right here. Now you can do it where something it's you know, poking out of his head if you want to, or his beard like that. If you want to do that, I'm not a, too much of a fan of doing it that way. I think something in here, just to give it, you know, some pop in here would look good. Let me get my skin cutter because these are kind of thick. The stem cutter is just the easy way instead of using your wire cutters because when these are thick like that and you want to cut them down a little bit. Now you can use this to also tie around on this as well, but you also want to use some glue in there. So I'm going to stick this right up against where the bow is just to give it a little something something there with the bow. I have my glue pot going right over here, which you won't see on the camera. Just oh, Got a big glue string on there. That was all tangled on me. Oh, get off me. 
and I'm going to stick it right underneath that bow. I'm just going to nestle it right in there. And this all has wires on it, the flowers. So it's all wired, so you can just take them and bend them however you want. I'm going to turn this one just around a little bit because I want you to be able to see the bells. And it's just nestled right up against that bow. Get my tail here. There we go. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm going to leave this stem just a little bit longer just because I have the tails here. And I want to make sure you're going to be able to see my my little flower. Now you can get most of these flowers and stuff. Now if that happens, that's not a problem. You know what? Just take some glue. And get my glue stick. I have a little bit of a glue stick here. And I'll just run some glue right on the back of that one. And then you can stick it right back on. Right back on the wire. There's a glob of the glue there, so I just wanted to take some of that off. There we go. And it's done. Okay. So let's go ahead and stick this baby right down in here. right in there and then you can take your tails and you can use your tails to go around the other side now you can also take your tail and I made them long because we have options we can take it just like this and if I want to loop it in here and loop it and I can use this just like this to make it like little loops I can do something like that as well with my tail if I want to but we'll hold off on doing that yet. Let's just get all my tails, make sure my flower is where I want it to be. Not quite get down in there. There we go. And you want to make sure it doesn't come out the other side, so keep that in mind. Now I want this close up to my bow. Um, just because that's the way I want to design this one today. And we'll put something something in there now I have all these little pieces that I've had from other projects and you can give things to give it texture in there I had some of these that I've already cut and I wanted to use these in there let me get all the ones that fell off the table or some of them at least and again let's just go cut and we're going to start putting these in randomly in here with some some design idea in there and just to give it a little something else oops they all fell on the floor now these are also some of these are what they call push-ups meaning you can push it up oops I took that one off um, and you can bring it up like a down like this to make it more fuller so that it's not all spread out so I like to do that because it does make it a little bit fuller in your piece And we'll go ahead and stick this one down in here and see how that is it just gives it a little something more add it into your project now when you're doing this of course you want to make sure that it winds up adhering to something you just don't want to thread it in there So I will do, after a while, I'll go back and I'll do one of these things, you know, to test it to make sure it's adhered to something and not just laying in there. And you can also take the, the greenery and just bring it around there too if you 
feel it needs to be a little bit more secure. Hold on, because my other pieces fell over here. There we go. If you don't have a big enough table, you have to make do with what you have. So I have this one and this one I'm going to add in. have little pine cones. They're green pine cones, which I think look really kind of cute. Let me put you over this way a little bit so you can see better. Now these aren't push up here because they have the pine here. So this is just a little droopy little thingamajig <laughs> that we're just going to add in there. And if we don't like it, we can always cut it off. But I think it just gives another texture. This makes it fun. So you can see how the reef is starting to build up in dimension and texture on things. And again, these aren't all the same, but look at how nice and full it's coming. Do I have two more of these? I have one. So let's put that off to the side. So now what I'm going to, oh, I have one with the baby on it. Why doesn't this one have berries? <laughs> so I like taking different ones. These are, again, left over from little projects. And I save all these little extra pieces because it makes, it helps just bring your, you know, your wreath to life by sticking in a different texture and it gives it more fullness as well. Put those off to the side. So let's just play around where we're going to stick these guys. We've got to stick some by Santa, you know, because you can't have it just all going one way. Stick some down here. We're just kind of playing in there and see how it's looking before we glue everything. These are the long ones. And it's just a little something, something. A little something, something. that one? No, those are different. And like I said, it just gives a little, so that one's too long. I don't like that one. But it just gives a little texture in there. And I like that. So let's go ahead and get these guys in there. I remember where I put them all. <laughs> I think I'm going to turn this one around and have it go the other way so that it's coming towards Santa like that. And then you take your other greenery and you can, you know, just bring it up and around so it looks like it's part of it. Where's my other pieces? And stick this one in there. I know there's one hiding here. Because if you have all the same, same, same stuff in there, it just gets kind of boring, so to speak. Let's turn these around. We got some that has a little, little glitter on it. I'm going to stick this one down right in here, kind of cover up a little bit of hole. Or I call it a hole. <laughs> And see, we took a wreath that was pretty basic, and look at the difference that we've made it. Look how nice and full this is all coming in. Oops. And even if it's just little pieces like this, it still makes a difference in your wreath. It's just sticking it somewhere. Oop, that was a big glue string. Have some berries here, but I gotta get to the more berries.
there. So see how the wreath is coming to life. Now everything isn't flat. See how this is sticking out? You can bend this one out a little bit. Take your wreath and bend it out. But I still think we need some more goodies in there. I think we need some with berries. Oh, I have another one on the floor. Yay. I have just a little one. I thought I had one more. <laughs> Let's get this one in here. I'm gonna kind of stick him right in here by Santa because he's got his little his little thingamajig there and he needs a little something else. So now let's get some really pretty berries. Now we got two types we can use. We have some that are a little bit just plain like that. And I say plain meaning it doesn't have any glitter to it. Um, I pack my stuff like this because if I walk by, you don't want the berries flying off. And these have a little gold to it. Or a little shimmer. I don't know. We could go either way. I think I'm going to go with a little bit of the shimmer this time. What do you guys think? Hmm. Shimmer or not some shimmer? Let's go not shimmer. I like the little... Oh, I do like the little shimmer. I think the shimmer, just to brighten it up a little bit. Let me get these other pieces out of here. And again, I save everything because you never know when you just need a little berry or a little leaf or something in your project. So let me just put these little guys over here. And let's go ahead and start with this guy. Let's get these berries in here. I'm going to need a little color in here. And you just stick them in, spread them out. A little, that little windy thing. And let's get another one going. I usually cut my stems off so I don't have all these long pieces because you don't have room for all these things sticking out so far. Because they stick out and everything you walk by and it's like, wee. <laughs> all right, I'm going to cut this one down. Just like that. And we'll stick this one in. Spread it out a little bit. And then this is where these little ones come into play. If you just want to add a little little something somewhere, like little pops of the berry somewhere. And see how that makes that look? How pretty? Pretty. I think, you know, actually I'm mixing the two. I got the light and the dark, and I kind of like that. And I kind of did that opposite up here. So let's take this one out, because I kind of like it the way I did it down there. Snip this baby out. Does I say that easier said than done, right? Oh, I think I wound it around here. Hold on. Creative juices are changing. Sometimes you can pull it back out. There we go. Let's stick this one in there instead. Foliage coming around there. There we go. Much better. And let's get some berries going in here. Bring 
some of our foliage around there so it, you don't have a big hole. And we'll go ahead and cut, since we already used this one higher, we'll go ahead and cut some of these off and stick them right in here. Oh, of course, it's going to be one that's going to be hard, right? always take these berries and stuff and you bring them you know within your plant your um, design as well because you don't want it to look like oh here's the flower and I know my bow looks like a like a hot mess right now don't worry we'll fix it you can just split these out like that glue on the fingers makes it hard <laughs> And depending how you want your bow, if you want it to be more up this way or spread out, it really, you know, is up to you how you want to do it. There we go. That's a little bit better. My bow is a little bit better. It's a little bit more happier. So we're going to take some of these little berries and we'll continue to use some within here. And sometimes what I have to do is hold it up and I see I have a gap here and a little bit of a gap there. So again, you can go back. Oops using your little pieces to help fill in the gaps. Don't want Santa's beard in there. Move his beard all the way over there so he's out of the way. <laughs> so we do new part of his beard. <laughs> Give me that. So see, these were picks that I had, and I'm not going to use the gold, but we can pull off, hopefully just pull it apart, save that gold for something else. I've got two pieces now. So let me hold it up and see. I just think it's coming out really cute. I'm going to cut this one just a little bit. It's hanging down just too much for me. I want to add some in here. I've got like a pocket there. Make sure I have a lot of my grapevines sticking out, my greenery. Santa, keep your beard over there for right now. <laughs> That's coming along really cute. I think I still want to put some more beads down there. And see how it just comes? You just kind of go back and forth and you look and you see, hmm, does it need it here and there? And, there? and the reef will talk to you and tell you, oh, it's done. Or I need a little something more here or there, depending what you're making. So just play with it. Get some of these out of the way. And again, I'm going to hold it up to see Santa's beard. A glue string right there. My tails are going to kind of come out like that. Get a leaf caught underneath there. So what we're going to do with the tails, we need to decide, do we want to go ahead and cut these and dovetail them? Do we want to cut them on an angle? If you find sometimes it's going to fray, you know, at the bottom of your ribbon, you can go ahead and just curl it just like that and put a little dab of glue and leave it straight across as well. Now these ribbons here aren't the type that are going to fray a little bit. So 
I think what we're going to do, we're going to go for the angle cut on these. And we're going to give them a little curl. Just a little curl. I'm still keeping them kind of long because when we do the curl, um, oops, I cut that one on the wrong angle, didn't I? I'm one of these people that if it's cut in an angle this way, they all should be, and then this is kind of the opposite way. Okay, so let's get those out of the way. And we're going to put something in the bow in just a second, I think. So what I do is I just take it just like this and you can make it as tight as a curl as you want. What I like to do is just curl them all up first. That's, it just makes it easier for me. You could do it however you want. It's like the old fashioned way mama's curling your hair. <laughs> there we go. My mom used to do this and used to stick bobby pins in it to hold the curl when my hair was wet. Or she used rags. I don't know if anybody remembers those days. With all these hot curling irons and everything that they have now. So I'm just curling this up. like that so now what you can do you can either just take your finger and just let it curl like a little bit like that or if you want it to be more curly like that you can pull it from the inside part of the curl to bring it down and make it a little bit curly and it's going to tell you which way it wants to curl and I think that's all that I'm going to do with that now when I shift things to somebody, I'll curl these all the, all the way up and I'll send them a little note saying, hey, you know, you curl in there. Um, just to give you an FYI, needs to be uncurled. Let's see, can we use these berries in there? No. So what we're gonna do now, now we use these berries only in the inner part here and then we use the really sparkly ones on the rest. So let's take some of these, and we're going to use some of these and put it within the bow. And that just kind of makes it part of it, rather than here's just a bow and here's just the reef kind of thing. Now you can use greenery and stuff in here too, but we're just going to stick some little berries in there, just like that. Doesn't have to be a lot. Right along as however many we want to stick in there. And where you want to stick them, just bring the bow up and just kind of look at it and we'll say, oh, put me here. A little piece coming up in the middle there. do is I'm going to cut this one down to here. So it's just a little bit in the middle. There we go. Put our leaf back in place. Pull our glue off. <laughs> glue gets everywhere. Still think we need a few more. Put these two together. And see, you just kind of tuck them in there. Okay. 
and there are like the like little hidden surprises that you see and things. So let's see where we are right now. Now I didn't use any decomesh in this. Woohoo! <laughs> Surprise me! And I think it's getting close to where we have it filled. I still see some down here. I do have some more of this. It just doesn't look full right here. So I do have it some more. That looks better. It's just nice and full. It kind of sunk in there a little bit. Oh, that's my wire. And see, just these little green berries in here were just enough. And by putting the red ones in, and I see how I'm going back, and I can test to make sure everything is adhered in there. Because I sure as heck don't want anything falling out when I'm giving it, you know, to somebody. That would not be fun. You can bend these back a little bit. Just a little bit. And there we go. I'm going to take this one and just bend it up a little bit. There. So now that I did that, I have a gap right here. So I have this one here. This was the really long one, wasn't it? Let's see if I have any more of the other ones. Who has fallen on the floor? Got one here. Stick it right in there and it'll fill that hole. And I think I have one more I can use. There we go. The little ones, so we're going to stick these two together. Just pop them in there, just like that. And look, you have a really pretty wreath. Santa's all set and his winter theme. Let me see if I can angle you up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Oops. Don't like this one the way it curled. So see how cute that is? Cute little bow. That's Santa. Not bad. Not bad, right? So, guys, like I said, this is a collaboration video. And Buckeye Girls Recent Things is in here. Um, Barb's Country Creations is in here. And Connie M. from Wreaths by Connie, who will be following me. So please, um, this is with YouTube, and we're, you know, just trying to do something to give y'all some inspiration and creative ideas to do for the holidays. Um, all the items that you will see will be available for um, sale in everybody's Etsy shop as well. So go ahead and have fun looking and seeing what we're all doing to be creative and give you some inspiration and ideas. All right? So thank you for coming to Nona's Nutty Crafts, and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's all free, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.